Man, I'm actually um, pretty happy that I'm making progress with this. I thought it would be much harder to talk about this, but I feel like with anything, when practicing vulnerability, it's just like, just got to put in the reps, you know, and it gets easier every time. But anyways, so back to chapter five. So I think I was pretty excited to go to college, honestly, but I think, I think all high schoolers are excited to go to college, right? And then I know in college, I was like so excited to graduate. So I just think that's just how human beings are in general. Um, but if you're tuning in, definitely start this from the top, from the beginning to the end, or else like it almost like doesn't make sense because it's just like various stages in my life and it's helpful to have that context. But anyways, so in this chapter, I will discuss more about my college life. So I went to college and I came in as a, like a pre-dental major. Um, I remember like in the yearbook I, in fifth grade, I put, uh, you know, they asked like, what do you want to do for a living as your occupation or what's your dream job? And I put dentists, interestingly enough. Um, so I went to this school called Rutgers University, the State University of New Jersey. It's a state university with like a ton of people. And I went, I lived in this dorm called Voorhees Hall, which is on Cook Campus, which is the agri school of, now it's called the School of Environmental and Biological Sciences. It's a science school. I think for our orientation packet, there was like at least like 60 Patels. <laughs> so that, that was funny. <laughs> Um, so I remember like I went to school and on my floor I think I was like the only Asian on my floor so I remember like just feeling like an outsider and this is a common theme in my life if you hadn't noticed from the first few episodes but I remember like I ended up joining an Asian joining an Asian fraternity um, my friend my good friend Rick lived with these three brothers, Josh, Nate, and Sambo. And that was really cool meeting them because honestly, the fraternity like really changed my life. So it's this really rigorous process where um, there's like a lot of like physical shit. Like you do like a shit ton of like running and push ups and stuff like that. Yes, I know like that's like illegal technically, whatever, but. The goal is basically think of it as like military training where like they're training you to, we were training the pledges and, I, and we all went through this and do that. Like suffering brings bonds and stuff like that. So a lot of people think it's like drinking and stuff like that, but that's more like afterwards, like during the pledging process, like we're not allowed to drink. So think of it, it's like a really hardcore boot camp, but in addition to actually being a full-time student and all that other shit. But um, actually college was cool because like actually like I felt like I was like really in a good place in terms of like I had a lot of friends like we went out we had a lot of fun and it just it was an awesome time honestly we road tripped a lot some of the coolest memories was like going to Cornell for this this conference called ICASU which stands it's like the east coast asian student union whatever but we did that in uh at UPenn, we did that. So we road tripped like everywhere. We would go to uh, University of Maryland a lot and hung out with like a lot of the sorority sisters um, with um, mostly I would say like the Kappa Phi Lambda and the Sigma Psi Zeta, which are the, these two Asian fraternities and occasionally with AKD5, but uh, not a, not as often as the other two. But we, we became really close to them. So we would go, we would maybe like every two or three weeks, we would go down there and party with them and played a lot of beer pong good times and yeah um what else did we do i think it was like that i think that was like the first time i tried weed but i never really like liked it as much as a lot of people i don't to me like it's like i don't know so i actually haven't really tried it as much as like most people maybe like a handful of times in my life um but anyways um 
Yeah, we road trip to Stony Brook University. That was a lot of fun. I think the most memorable three like fraternity events was like other than ECOS. So other than going to Cornell and partying all the way up there, going to Binghamton, going to uh, we oh we did a brothers brotherhood tr- retreat trip. So we would, like drove down to Florida University of Florida in Gainesville. Had a blast there. And, oh, man, this is making a lot of sense now. I met my uncle, who is basically my big bro's big bro. So in fraternity life, you get assigned, like, a big bro. So my big bro's name is Fung, and his big bro is Tommy. And Tommy's, like, one of my um, older brothers who I still am pretty tight with today, who's a, a really good role model and everything, good mentor. But anyways, his little brother, his name is Hui, this Vietnamese guy who was like so cool, so suave. And he actually won like Mr. UF, which is like a huge accomplishment, honestly. Super popular dude. Like he was like the guy on campus, you know, everyone like the ladies loved him, like guys loved him, just well loved. And he ended up becoming a dentist. And he actually, uh, sadly enough, actually passed away due to like, I think like a brain tumor or something like that. But um, meeting him actually made a pretty big difference. I was always like, man, like, I want to be like that guy. And honestly, looking, like, reflecting on my life now, I feel like I'm actually, like, pretty close to him in the sense that, like, I have a lot of friends. I have 14,000 LinkedIn friends. And my life is completely different than it was at then at that moment when I first met him where I just felt like, you know, like, I I felt like I was, like, average, I guess, you know, to be honest, right? Um, so, going to college, the fraternity was a huge, huge influence in my life. It taught me so many things. It taught me how to organize events. It taught me how to make friends and adapt. It taught me uh, the value of finding community and finding you know, how to connect with like other Asians and different types of Asians. I started hanging out with a lot more Korean people regularly, learned a lot about Taiwanese culture, being involved with TASA, which is like the Taiwanese American Student Association, being involved with them, uh, VSA, uh, Vietnamese Student Association. And then um, similar to what I'm doing now with the LinkedIn Asian Alliance is what I did back in college. So it's interesting to see how all these skills kind of like come together when you get older but when you're doing it you're kind of like why the fuck am I spending like so much time doing all this but honestly all those skills has helped me a lot and has has helped me live a pretty fulfilled life so I'm so glad I did it but I think back then you know you kind of don't really think about these things you know um so yeah so 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 the college life was fun. Uh, I did eventually work at a dentist's office. Uh, that was actually one of the coolest jobs. Um, and then because of me, all, all these other brothers still work at the dentist's office. Like every year, she, she, she hires a lot of my fraternity brothers. And we have a yearly um, Christmas gathering. So shout out to Dr. Ch- Dr. Chow. You're awesome. But uh, yeah, I would say like the one memorable, a couple of memorable things that stood to mind. Um, I st- I met a, like Vicky. I became really close to Vicky, uh, which we still hang out to with today. She actually is living like a mile away from where I am right now at my girlfriend, my fiance's place. So thank you, Vicky, for being my long lasting, f- longest lasting friend at Rutgers since day one. So that was 2006. So we've been friends for 14 years. Damn, yo. Uh, And then what else is memorable about Rutgers? Oh, the football games. The football games are so much fun. Two of the craziest memories. One was we when we stormed the field when we beat Louisville. We were both undefeated at the time. I think eight and eight, eight and zero, eight and zero, both or eight and seven. One of us, I don't remember. Or we were both undefeated. We were both ranked in the top 25. They were ranked actually third, I believe. And when we won, it was nationally televised on ESPN and we stormed the field. That was like the craziest and most amazing college experience time ever. So picture this. 
everyone's super drunk. There's like 50,000 people in the Rutgers stadium. Like if you're talking about the tailgating and the partying, like everyone, even getting tickets, like we had to like camp out early just to get tickets. Like that's how nuts it was. People were selling their tickets for like 150 bucks. I remember I was actually thinking about doing that because I was like, yo, 150 for a college student is like a lot. But I'm so glad I didn't do that. Like that was like worth like the fact that I'm still talking to you about this now shows you how excited and how amazing that experience was. But picture this, close your eyes, picture like screaming students and everyone doing like the RU chant, like hoorah, hoorah, Rutgers raw, up team, red team, Rutgers, blah, blah, blah. Like it was fucking nuts, dude. And yeah, that was a really fun time. Really good times. All right. That concludes this chapter. Stay tuned for next chapter six.